Hello, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a look inside Traveling the Parks. This is the Traveling the Parks Teacher's Manual. Within the Teacher's Manual, you are going to find a list of the 60 national parks covered. My plan for this sheet is to highlight the parks as we complete them. That way, if we go out of order, which we will probably do based on interest, um, I won't forget which ones we have done and which ones we haven't done. That also gives you the ability to do portions at a time. Let's say you only want to do maybe 12 weeks worth this summer and then 12 weeks worth next summer and do that until you've completed all of them. That would be an option as well. You also have a list here that has your required resources, which are only one item. Because I knew libraries were still closed and I knew that the chances of us being able to get a dozen books was going to be difficult, I wrote this curriculum to only need one resource. So this is the only resource that you have to have for traveling the parks. But because this is the Waldock Way, I have obviously suggested tons of other resources that would expand the learning. So you have books, activities, games, and shows as well. And then there are two different types of checklists or lesson plans. One is just a rundown of everything that you would need to do to have completed a park. So if you were going to maybe do a morning basket or an afternoon basket, or you just kind of wanted to do it at a, you know, a leisurely rate, you would use this sheet. You can either print 60 copies and write the national park on each, or you can print one and laminate it and use a dry erase marker. And this just lists all of the things per park that you would do. So you could just check them off and then when you were done, you were done. So it makes it very easy. Or if you prefer to do it weekly, here's a weekly checklist. And it just includes day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and that breaks the activities up for you so that you would have completed one park in one week. Again, you can print 60 copies or you can just print one, laminate it, and use a dry erase marker each week. Then you have your actual lesson plans. Each park lists the pages in the National Parks book that you need to read. It also lists any additional books that may go along with it, such as a um, true book or maybe a Who Pooped in the Park book. Emily absolutely loves these, and there's quite a few of them to go along with the National Parks. There's also a virtual video tour so all of these things that are underlined are going to be clickable. You're going to be able to click all those and go directly to the sites. These QR codes over here to the right are for your virtual video. So that once you print this out, you have all your materials and you're ready to go. You don't have to go back to find a clickable link. You can just use your phone or your tablet or your favorite device and scan these codes right here. So you have all 60 of the parks worth of lesson plans. And then in the back, you have an appendix. And your appendix has extra things to enrich the learning experience. There are two art extensions. One is a postcard. And Emily has created one from Yellowstone here as an example. So here's Old Faithful. And then on the back, she says, greetings from Yellowstone. I wish you were here. And then she addressed it to Nana and Papa. Obviously, if you put a real address, you could mail this. Um, she is hoping to just give this to them when we can see them again soon. Your other art option is a snapshots page. They would just write the national park up here and then draw four pictures of them doing one of the fun activities that the park has to offer. For some further research, there is a brochure option here. You would print this front and back and then you would tri-fold it so that it would look like this when it was completed. For further research for older children or if you just want to pick maybe your child's favorite park to do this or if you choose you could do it on every park. The further research is going to allow your child to go deeper into the um, logistics of the specific national park such as the history of it, the features of the land and the plant and animal life there. And then, like I said, these Who Pooped in the Park books are very popular for national parks. I believe there is about 15 of them total. So I created a Who Pooped in the Park page to go along with these. If your child loves poop, and let's be honest, what child doesn't, this is a great way to extend the learning. So they'll put the park name, they'll choose an animal from the book, and then they would illustrate the animal, illustrate its tracks, illustrate, illustrate its scat, 
and then the straight poop and I know that sounds hilarious but that is actually what they call it in the book so that is the teacher's manual next up you have the student notebook and your student notebook is going to include a traveling expenses page which you will see in just a minute how this is going to come into play but it's just going to list the different size vehicles for transportation the daily rental rate of the vehicles the fuel economy and the cost of a gallon of gas this is just generic and it's just um, kind of a baseline for the following pages for every single national park you will be mapping your route so you would, for us, it would be over here in Florida. You're going to mark your start spot, mark where you're going to end, and then map your route of how you're going to get there. And then you have a park in numbers. You're going to put the today's date, circle what the weather is like there after you've looked it up, and then the degrees in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then this box on every parks and numbers page is going to come directly from the book. So you can see here that for Acadia, the parks and numbers says area cover in square miles. So you're going to just write that there. Highest point, you're going to fill that out there. And miles of shoreline, you're going to fill that out there. So it's kind of an introduction into research for your child. Over here is where that expense sheet is going to come into play. They are going to need to research with your help if needed how many miles it is going to take to travel to the park, the number of days that it's going to take to travel because you need to know um, how many days you're going to need to be renting the vehicle, and then the total t cost to travel the park. Now, yes, this may need you may need to help your child a little bit extra on this, but I promise after they've done 60 parks, they would have probably a pretty good idea of how to do the math for this. Now, if you have an older child and you want to extend it, you can have them um, go to the park and from the park and also put a round trip cost in here. You can also have them research and look up how much it would cost to stay at the park, for instance, camping versus a tent and an RV hookup site and include that in the cost as well. So there's numerous ways to extend this. You will also have a travel journal for each park. So after watching the virtual video tour, they would draw a picture of the park or themselves in the park and then list some things to do and some things to see within the park. And then the last page for each park is an animal profile. Now, again, because I wanted to keep this minimalistic, I have already made a animal profile book within this curriculum. So for instance, for Acadia, they're going to have the peregrine falcon that is mentioned in this book. So I have done some of basic research for them. There are some basic facts here for the falcon and then the scientific name, its predators and its prey, which is exactly what they're going to be doing on the animal profile. They will be listing its name, its scientific name, drawing the animal in its habitat and then illustrating the predator or the prey and they will underline predator or prey and then they will list animal facts. And that is repeated for all 60 of the state parks. Next, like I just showed you guys, you have your animal profiles. Each park has one popular animal that was either mentioned in the book or one that was mentioned on the National Parks Service website. And it just gives you a short synopsis of it, which leaves way for plenty of research if your child wants to do more research. But if they don't, that's okay too. They're still going to be learning about 60 fun, unique animals to that area in the U.S. The last thing that is going to be included is a game pack. Because what would a curriculum be without games? Within this game pack, you are going to receive these beautiful National Parks cards that list the name as well as include a picture. And then these bingo boards. There are six bingo boards, so plenty for your family size. And then you're going to have instructions for how to play memory, bingo, Pictionary, and a guess in 10 game. Now I want to show you guys what I did in case you two want to do the same thing. This is one of those photo boxes from Michaels and I printed my bingo boards 
four to a page so that they would print smaller and my bingo boards and all of my cards fit in here perfect so I could just throw these either in a basket or on a shelf so that when we're ready to play games I can pull this out and all of our games are ready to go. The very very last thing included is because Teddy Roosevelt was the founder of the national parks and he helped establish them we are going to be including our who was Teddy Roosevelt unit study within this bundle. So you'll be getting the entire Traveling the Parks curriculum as well as the brand new Who Was Theodore Roosevelt unit study.